This episode of Shadowversity is brought to you by the Castles shirt! Because castles are awesome and you want to let your friends know that not only are they awesome, but you know that they are awesome as evident by this awesome shirt with an awesome castle on it. But not just any castle, I'm talking about a historically accurate, properly designed, high detailed castle with all the bells and whistles. Available through Teespring, link in the description. Shadowversity. Greetings, I'm Shad, and in this video we'll be looking at Windhelm from the video game The Elder Scrolls Skyrim and analyse its design for how effective it really would be in regards to its defences. If you haven't seen one of my castle review videos before, basically I take a look at a castle and or castle-like structure and ask if this, you know, structure actually existed in real life, how effective would it be at its primary purpose, which is to protect the occupants who live inside. And we shall start where I like to start all my reviews, and that is the big picture, the size, location. Well, first of all, in regards to the size of Windhelm, like nearly every other city in Skyrim, it's not big enough to be a real city. Now, I understand that in the, this video game, it's a representation of the actual lore of the Elder Scrolls, and in the lore, Windhelm is a much, much bigger city than what is represented in Skyrim, the video game. I understand that completely, but this is a proper 3D rendered model and structure that could be converted into a, something that existed in real life. And if it was a one-to-one -one conversion, this is not a city. And I like to point that out just so we get a good basis. What is interesting about Windhelm, very much like Solitude, is that it's actually small enough to be a self-contained castle or fortress with a decent number of other buildings within its walls, which is perfectly fine for a, that's what we you can actually find in many historical castles. Take a look at Malbork Castle, largest castle in the world by surface area, and look at all the different you know buildings and structures that are within the this castle's walls. So this could have actually been the castle or fortress of the king. And I know the, you know, political strife that Skyrim is in at the moment, so the king usurper, maybe? Anyway, if you hear me refer to Windhelm by city, it's only because it's called a city in the game and not because I really actually think it's the size of a city. It'd be more accurate to call it a castle or fortress. Now to its location. Well, looking at it, uh, there are two major problems, what we can see here. Now, it's not to say that's awful overall. If it wasn't for these two big problems, the location would actually be pretty good. I mean, it has a natural moat in, in the you know way of a river that runs right in front of it, so that's a really big defensive advantage. But the first problem is a similar problem that has come up in other videos, like Solitude and also like Care More and From the Witcher. This big, huge mountain right beside. I, I just don't understand why video game developers do this. It seems fairly obvious to me, but I guess it's not. But one of the biggest, you know, more significant principles in castle design is location. Specifically, get it up high, on a mountain or hill or anything. The first and most significant defensive advantage you can give to a castle or fortress is in location. And if you can make that location so inaccessible, specifically only accessible by one path, you have almost made your fortress castle impregnable if you do that. Give the the attackers no other choice but from approaching the castle the way you want them to because as soon as you can manipulate attackers to only approach in one way you can fortify that path that you know way to approach a castle oh to the days just uh, beyond uh, and really that's what they did in real life I I've mentioned Hotchostovitz castle so much it's just the best historical example of a castle that is just done this in spades. So many gatehouses along the only path that can reach the castle. This is the principle of castle design, one of the first primary and most significant principles of castle design that you should understand when you think about castles. Location. One path, one accessible way to the castle. And I'm talking primary access, okay, for like wags and stuff, because you can have uh, back doors like a postern, okay, the sally port. So in regards to Windhelm, we have this big, beautiful mountain right next to it, and I'm just wondering, 
Why on earth didn't they put the city on top of the mountain? It's right there. I mean, come on, guys. What a missed opportunity. I mean, my goodness. But instead, no, it's plonked right down at the base of the mountain next to it. And not only is it clearly vulnerable to landslides and other things like just natural landslides is what I'm talking about here but if an enemy was motivated enough they could climb the mountain and engineer a rock side or landslide that can take out gee I have a look at it could take out half of the you know fortress below or even the whole thing a massive vulnerability here now I understand that there's some more complex parts to Windhelm's location because it is supposed to represent a city, not a fortress. And putting a city on top of a mountain can make no sense at all because a city is supposed to be easily accessible for the people who live in it and also uh, people traveling to and fro, trading and other things like that. And so in this sense, for a city, it makes more sense for a city to be placed nearby or beside a river, uh, easy access to fresh water, and it can also make it a better trading hub if it can have a port. So in regards to a city, a city can be better placed near a river, but if Windhelm was a fortress, just a castle, it would be better placed on a mountain. So with the city aspect of Windhelm taken into account, it, yes, it makes sense for it to be nearby the river, but not right up against the mountain where it's vulnerable to these landslides. In fact, I would have placed it on the other side of the river where it's more open and it also gives more room for expansion when the city's population grows. And what would have worked even better on top of this, because the king would want to be as protected as possible, is that he would have put his palace on top of the mountain separate to the city. The other problem with its original location, okay, if you have a look at the city, there is an area that's fairly flat, okay, right next to the walls. And not only just next to the walls, it extends a decent uh, distance away from the walls, which is the provides the perfect approach for an attacking army. All they have to do is cross the river, a bit downstream, you know, rally, assemble their army out of arrow shot or anything like that, and just assault this wall. And they have a clear path right to those walls with no real obstructions in their way. They can just run up with their ladder men, okay, and got, you know, soldiers carrying ladders, get ladders against the wall, get up, and if they were motivated enough, they could even have a siege tower. The way that they could have fixed this, okay, is by digging a big wide trench offside the river that's right there to cover this exposed part of the wall. Definitely easy enough to do. You have the river there and that would have basically protected all sides of this fortress except the side that has the mountain on it. Now, granted, okay, the mountain blocks armies from getting access to the wall on that side. It just means the army, like I said, can engineer landslides and the mountain itself is a threat. So these two big problems makes Windhelm's location not very good. If it wasn't for those, it would be pretty good. Perfect Perfectly decent, especially with it sitting right on the edge of a river. If there was no mountain behind it, they could have so easily dug that trench that I was mentioning all the way around the city and have a full-fledged moat protecting it. Perfect. All good. But no, it's not there, so location is now rubbish. Which is a big pity, because in terms of Windhelm's primary entrance, they uh, have this. It's funny. I was gonna. They've done the right thing, but they've uh, they've thought of the right thing and executed in a very lazy, ineffective way, which again uh, renders the effectiveness of this bridge towards the. Uh, castle city far less than what it could have been. Of course the main problem with the bridge is that it is not the only option that the enemy has to approach the city. They can just go around it which makes the bridge useless. Utterly pointless to have it uh, fortified and defended uh, so much even though there's problems with it and we'll get to that. But if there was no other option to approach the city apart from this big beautiful bridge, well that would be awesome. Absolutely awesome. That's what you want. Force the enemy to approach the castle the way you want them to approach and then punish them for it. And so their initial idea with the bridge was really good. In fact, the bridge, it, there's some something that is potentially just absolutely awesome, but they trip at the finish line like so many fantasy castles do. It's a pity that... So what we see here, essentially there is a big long gatehouse. You could almost call it two gatehouses, uh, but I could mo mostly consider this a, a single gatehouse with two um, entrances, a front entrance and a back entrances, or two gates. And I need to, you know, correct myself because they're not gates, they're archways. And this is where we run into the first 
problem. Uh, the archways, there, there's nothing blocking them. There's no portcullis, not, e not even a gate, there's just an archway! And I know like in the Siege of Solitude that uh, gates magically appear on archers that didn't have them before in the regular game and so perhaps that's what they did here with Windhelm and it's just ridiculous, I, I, I don't understand. Should have permanent gates there all the time. And also let me just add, okay, at the secondary uh, entrance to this long gatehousey bridge thingy, after they exit the second part, they could a perfect place for a drawbridge. Perfect. But instead they've just extended the bridge to the front entrance of the uh, city, so again to miss opportunity. Okay, back to the gatehouse. If this was a proper gatehouse, meaning it had two flanking towers on either side which were a permanent part of the structure itself, with multiple levels for murder holes and a portcullis and all that and a roof atop, you would actually call it a barbican. A barbican was kind of like the outermost gatehouse, so the furthest gatehouse door or secondary gatehouse from the main structure can be called a barbican. It's an odd term, Barbican, because I have heard its use be applied to some different structures, but this is certainly one use of the term, calling this an outermost gatehouse a Barbican. And sometimes Barbican has also been used just synonymously with gatehouse, and they call the primary gatehouse the Barbican. And so I have found some confusing kind of uh, definitions for this term. I think the most accurate use of Barbican is uh, right here. If there was a proper gatehouse, house on this bridge, this would be a more accurate representation of a historical Barbican. So you can call the standard gatehouse of a castle walls a gatehouse, and if there's a secondary outer one, therefore yes, you could call it a Barbican. So no barriers over these archways, uh, which I, I, I don't understand, yeah, anyway. What should have happened is, yeah, there would be gates that make it very, very difficult for the enemy to bust through. The issue is, in uh, just above the gate on the ledge uh, here, right, what we see, there's only the barest barrier between the actual rampart um, and the edge. Uh, what really should be is crenellations, actual battlements to give the defenders cover from the far arrow fire from the enemy, and also room for them to shoot back and be protected. There's nothing there, no crenellations, which means the enemy would easily be able to just walk through this archway, because there's nothing stopping them! And then we get to this pathway in between kind of two walls or walkways on either side. This again is a, a potentially a brilliant medieval defensive feature because what it should have is nice high walls on either side with battlements okay defending or uh, protecting the defenders up on top which enables the defenders to just rain down death upon anyone who is so unfortunate to be caught in between but there's some big problems here one there is access to the ramparts from the inside. This is like absolutely retarded. You do not do, you do not give the attackers a means to get up to your walls, especially in the primary location where you want to kill them. You don't want to give them a means of escape, but that's what they have here, a perfect means of escape. And not only escape, a means for them to run up to the walls and take out the defenders. It is ridiculous. What really should have happened here is that it should be no access at all to the walls from the inside of this gatehouse, from this pathway in between. Instead, the access needs to be from outside the gatehouse, specifically past it, in between the gatehouse and the front entrance of the city, or better yet, have the wall of the city next to the front gate extend forward and connect to the gatehouse. And so there's an actual pathway from the uh, ramparts of the city walls to the ramparts of the gatehouse, and no other access, meaning you cannot get access to the top parts of the gatehouse from the pathway that actually leads through it and into the city. That is how it should have been designed, but because it is not, it is ridiculous! So it breaks my heart because there was such potential and it almost like it almost seems like the you know developers or designer uh, someone must have known partially what they were doing to get the initial uh, elements there in place, but then uh, it just falls apart. You went full retard, man. Never go for retard. This bridge gatehouse is like an inbred version of a real historical gatehouse. Something has just gone incredibly wrong with it. Now let's look at the city's outer wall. Okay, it's big and it's thick. It gets points for that. That's what it should be. It should be big and it, could, it should be thick. That's what she said. 
but also there should be proper battlements on top of the wall to give the defenders cover, and there should be good ramparts. The ramparts atop Windhelm were all blocked up with stone bricks and everything like that. It'd be very hard to walk to and fro on them. And there's no real cover. You see these intermittent, you know, protrusions that are an effect from the buttresses that are running up and down from the bottom up the wall. But these aren't really merlons. They're not made to give effective cover. Therefore, it would be very difficult for defenders to uh, utilize the top of these walls effectively to fire down on any enemies. They could be used, I mean, they have, uh, you know, room, like, there's a flat above them to walk to and from, it's just full of crap and not good cover. The other big disappointing thing about the walls is that there are no towers, okay, so that means there are, there's so much cover that the enemy can receive when they assault these walls. All they have to do is go right up at closer, pr put their backs to the wall, and it'd be very difficult for the defenders to top them to actually fire down. And as soon as they, you know, walk around one of these buttresses on the wall, or even and around one of the corners because there's no protrusion on the walls to extend the uh, defenders outwards a bit so they have a better field of fire they will be able to get cover the enemy will be able to get cover the other big fail with the city walls is the main gate there's no gatehouse here at all it's just at least it has a, a door on it thank goodness but there's no gatehouse per se meaning there is no ramparts above it there's no extensions there is no uh, matriculations for them to fire down or anyone who tries to beat down the wall, the door I mean. And remember, the gate, okay, is the most vulnerable part of any given castle. Historically, it's the gates, the gatehouses, that are the most fortified parts on a castle. Because that's the entrance, it's just logic. But here on Windhelm, there's nothing here. It's just an ornamental gate with a door on it. Now, in regards to Windhelm's internal layout, there's no real internal divisions. There could be. I mean, there are some passageways and arches that if uh, gates were put on them, it would create some internal divisions. But again, there are no gates anywhere. Even in front of the palace, where they, this is clearly a gate, and I'm pretty sure in the Siege of Windhelm, a gate magically appears here as well. But the, but in the normal game, just casually walking around the streets, there's no gate e even in front of the palace. Every single passageway and archway throughout the city is completely open. Now, in real life, that would mean as soon as the enemy breaches any part of the walls of this city castle, they would be able to take the entire castle. Clearly Clearly there is provision for it on the palace, so uh, sorry, let's just say that, alright, they, they would still need to breach this wall here. At least there would be some level of defense uh, and separation for the king. Okay, there's this small internal bailey just in front of the main entrance to the palace. So if there is a gate there, which there kind of is in the siege, at least there is that. Now let's look at the palace itself. Something just j screams at me as to just not working, it's ridiculous, uh, it's just, yeah. okay, and this is the same issue that I explained in my review of the castle of Grand Soren from Dragon's Dogma. So that isn't the video looking at Grand Soren City, it's looking at the Grand Soren Castle, and it's that each, you know, upper level is a bit smaller than the one beneath it. Now, a structure like this can be built, it, it exists, but so often, whenever people in video games and castles everywhere design this type of uh, structure, they don't don't understand basic architectural design principles. For instance, load-bearing points. There is a sizable bit of structure uh, sitting high up and more centered than the external walls, and specifically the smallest, most highest part. What is holding it up? There needs to be support columns on the major load-bearing points, which is the corners, and then you could have archways underneath uh, distributing the load to those corners, but those uh, columns would need to run all the way into the ground, because that's exactly where the load has to go for a, for a building to stand upright that needs to be supported by the ground, not thin air. And so often in video games and stuff like that, people who make this design, and I see it more often than you would think, they design the outside, yeah, it looks cool, a tiered kind of structure, that looks pretty, it's going up, it's in, uh, you know, profile, it's slim and all that. But then they completely forget about that when they design the inside of it, which essentially makes the centre part that we see on the outside, the highest and most centre part, floating on thin air, because there's nothing internally holding 
holding it up. And the way we can know this, well, we just go inside. And the uh, most center room, you know, within the palace is the throne room thing. Which is, a, it, this is a big room, okay? Technically, there should be support pillars running right down the center of this room, holding up the center part of the palace above us. A great real-world example of what I'm talking about here is in Gothic-style architecture. And why don't we take a look at the Neo-Gothic Chapel from my nearby by home city, Melbourne in Australia. This is St. Patrick's Cathedral. And just to let you know, I have a whole video exploring Gothic style architecture on location at St. Patrick's Cathedral. So for this, just for this video, what I'm referring to is the center tower. See this beautiful big center tower, right? That is sitting in the middle of the cathedral. So for it to sit in the middle, it can't be floating on thin air. There needs to be something holding it up. And of course, there is four big massive stone pillars and archways in those stone pillars to support the whole structure. Right here is where this central tower technically is. And I was like, hang on, where is the tower? And look, there was a, oh, it's above us. It's right there. And so these four pillars, and look how big these pillars are. So one, two, three, and four. It is these four pillars that are holding up that huge central tower. And that's how St. Patrick's Cathedral can have this massive tower right in the center of itself. There needs to be pillars holding it up. And so back to the palace? No, there's nothing there, okay? Now, there is a secondary entrance to Windhelm, which is the entrance uh, to the docks. And I, I, I like it mostly because it's this, you know, thin kind of walkway in between two big walls. And so all the principles that we talked about on the uh, bridge, okay, with the bridge kind of gatehouse and has two higher walkways on either side, well, that creates the same effect. A death zone for anyone trying to break through this uh, lower passageway. And uh, there isn't battlements up the top, but because it's such a narrow space, I mean, it's, it would be very hard for any attackers down at the bottom to get the angle good enough to hit or shoot at uh, the defenders up at top. So it's not too, as much of an issue here, which uh, leads me to the conclusion that this uh, uh, exit entrance is uh, mostly defended adequately enough, okay? It's effective, it's good. Which seems to be one of the only few effective parts about Windhelm's design. Unfortunately. Now, I have been only looking at it in pure practicality and believability and realism. How effective would this building be for defense if it actually existed? Outside of defense, okay, Windhelm is beautifully uh, like the architecture. I'm not saying design in terms of layout, but the stylistic design of the buildings and stuff like that are just very consistent to the lore of Skyrim, very beautiful. And that's where Skyrim really shines, in my opinion. Not necessarily the true efficacy of their designs and from a military kind of viewpoint but the stylistic design is beautiful and it's such a pity because if they got the practicality and realism side with this beautiful style that they can just hit out of the park oh my goodness it would just be glorious and unfortunately for Windhelm it uh, isn't as good as even say Solitude of course Solitude had the big problem with the uh, gravity defying arch that it's built upon but in terms of its layout it had a pretty good layout with good solid internal divisions that just didn't have gateways uh, blocking them off or anything like that. So it's interesting, Solitude's big blunder was the archway and the lack of uh, gateways on the internal divisions. Uh, and it even had like a, a secondary outer bailey protecting itself. But that was kind of it. Windhelm almost has this awesome thing. If the location was better with a proper moat all the way around it, and if its bridge, the gatehouse bridge, didn't have those massive blunders on it, uh, the bridge gatehouse could have been awesome and Windhelm could have been brilliant. But unfortunately, like many of the castles in Skyrim, it trips at the finish line. Blast you, Bethesda! Hey, I love, don't worry, I love you, Bethesda, but also blast you for your constantly tripping at the finish lines. You, you, have, you start so well and then it just goes off and it gets ruined. But there you go, that has been my review of Windhelm from Skyrim. Thank you very much for watching, I hope you have enjoyed, and I hope to see you again, and until then, farewell.